If you want to create beautiful, dynamic photographs, you need to learn the art of selection and masking in post-processing. That way you can give a different look to different parts of your photograph. On One Photo Raw 2024 has some wonderful masking tools that can automatically select a lot of things for you. It's not perfect. There are times when it'll select something and maybe you need to go give it some help to get just the right mask created. But we're gonna take a look at a few of the tools in this video and show you how you can start transforming your photos by selectively masking and applying adjustments. All right, let's start off with some of the easy ones. And I'm gonna choose this photo here. If you don't recognize this, it is part of Spaceship Earth at Epcot. And I'm just gonna double click to get it opened up. You can see it's got a very bald sky, there's Spaceship Earth. And down at the bottom here is just a little bit of the tree line. So let's take a look. We've got tools over here that has Super Select AI. And you can see from the demo that it's showing how it can select different people. You just basically click on what you wanna do. What I'm gonna do instead of using that tool is I'm gonna come over here to Local. I'm gonna add an adjustment and I just click quickly that way. And then you can see there's a black mask over here and I've got all the various adjustment tools. It seems to default to the exposure being a little bit low. So I'm gonna set that back to zero. And I'm gonna to come to my masking tool. Now I've got mine set over here inside of this panel. If you go to Window and Properties, you'll see that you can show it or hide it. You can nest it, which means instead of it being free floating, which is the way that it automatically is on top of your photograph, it's over there nested on the side. And then Auto Collapse, which means it'll only open up when your mouse is over it. So you can turn these on and off individually. If I turn off Nest, you'll see that it's over here, but the Auto Collapse is still on. So as I mouse down, it comes back over here and then it goes away. So it's really up to you what you want to do with it. But I've, I find that I like it nested rather than on the canvas where I'm working. So let's go over to our masking. Take a look at where it says region. So this is going to be what it detects, the super select tool inside of your photograph. And you've got all or none background. It thinks everything is the background. Nothing is in the foreground. But architecture, it very clearly picks up Spaceship Earth as part of the architecture. Flora, you can barely see it, but down at the bottom where the trees are, those are highlighted in red. And the sky, you can see that it'll select that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the architecture. And I'm gonna click that, then I'll come down here to click Apply. Once that's done, it'll think for a moment, it'll go ahead and create my mask. And you can see it just right here, or you can hit the letter O and it'll show you the mask we've made. Since this is in the white area, that's the area where these adjustments will take effect. So I could go over here and I could lower the exposure. I mean, instead of uh, a bright silver ball, I could have almost like a black sphere. Maybe it's a Death Star, who knows? You know, you can affect the contrast however you want. One of the things I like to do is play with the colors. So I might just change the color completely. Is it red? Is it gold? And that mask works very well. That's probably the simplest way that you can do things. What happens if you wanted to adjust the sky instead? Well, there's a couple things you could do, particularly if you want to adjust both of these. Let's come over here to masking. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this mask. So down here, you can see there is a place to copy it. So that just copied it. Now we're going to add another adjustment. And on this one, I'll click on that. So now we've seen all that and it's got a black mask. I'll come back up to masking. And now I've got something in my copy buffer so I can go ahead and paste that. And what I'll do is come over to this one and invert the mask. So now I've got a mask for the sky and a mask for Spaceship Earth. So maybe I wanna brighten up the sky a bit. I wanna get some contrast going there. Let's see what we have with adding this. I think I like it kind of like there. And I don't necessarily need to bring out the highlights, but what I may want to do is take that temperature just a little bit cooler. And I'm, I'm really going for something gaudy and atrocious here, so bear with me. And that gives me the sky that I'm looking for for what I plan to do next. So I'm going to click this to close it. I'm going to come over here back to our spaceship Earth, and I'm going to bring back this tint. And I just want to make this kind of a little golden thing, and I want to make it a little bit brighter. 
So I'll bring out some of the highlights. And let's see what happens with our midtones. That's more like what I'm looking for. So we can open up the shadows. And now we've got just a bright gold globe, you know, on the sky. So if we come down here, click this little eyeball. That's what we had before. And that's what we have now. That's the power of masking. Being able to work separately on your sky and your architecture, your portrait subject in the background, whatever it may be. So that's the easy way. I didn't have to do anything with brushes. If it can work that way, that's great. Not every photograph will work that way. So let's go choose another photograph. All right, so in this photograph, you can see that the scene is backlit. I've got nothing really up here up front. I've got a silhouette of some barren trees. I'd like to do something with the sky, but masking inside of these branches is pretty tough. But we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to go over here to Local. I'm going to Add Adjustment. Then I'm going to come over to Masking again. And what am I going to choose? Well, background is everything again. Foreground is really nothing. Flora. That kind of gives me the land and the trees. I've got a little bit of natural ground, sky, and maybe some mountains. I'm going to actually go ahead and select the flora because where I need to do the fine tuning is inside of those branches. So let's click that. We're going to click apply. And let me hit the O key. You can kind of already see it already because by default, the exposure drops down. You can see how it looks here. And that's the mask, which honestly is not very good because there should be branches over here. But what I can do is first get rid of some of these spots down here. So where you see these things, that's like part of the sky here that uh, didn't get selected. And I don't want to select that, but maybe down here on the bottom, I do want to select that. So let's go grab my brush. That's the masking brush. And you've got a choice whether you want to paint or erase. So what I'm going to do is come down here and I want to paint in. So it's black there. So let's click this to paint. The other thing you can do, and I'll make my cursor a little bit larger so maybe you can see it. I'm on a Mac. If I hold down the option key, it swaps between the plus and minus. So you can probably choose that way if you want to. And we'll just paint out some of those details because I want those to be in part of the mask. All right, so let's go back over and see if we can't fix this because this doesn't do us any good at all because the sky would look atrocious. If we try to do adjustments, let me go ahead and just bring this all the way down. That's nothing, nobody wants that. So now we've got our brush. The thing you wanna do next is get something called the refine tool. So we come up here at the top. If you don't see this toolbar, by default, it kind of auto hides. You can have a view setting that'll ch change it. I kind of prefer having it there so I know where the little rascal is. I'm going to click the refine brush. You can hit the letter N to do that. And now I'm just going to start brushing over all of these ugly branches. And what it'll do is read that. And notice there's some overlap into the sky itself because it would be nearly impossible to try and determine every one of those little branches and twigs. All right, so I've brushed over all the tree. I'm going to let go of my mouse, and it's going to start thinking. You can see the little progress preparing the mask, and it'll render a brand new mask for me. All right, if we hit the O key now, that's a very different mask than what we had before. Now you can see back there, those are clouds that are in the sky. but I'm not going to worry about that. Now, one of the reasons this worked for me is that you see over here at the top, we've got something called method. And by default, it goes to hair or branches. You could also change it to some of these other things for hard edges, diffuse edges, noisy images, and so forth. So we left it on branches because that is exactly what we were working on. So now that I've got that mask there, what do I want to change? Well, I want to change the sky. But if I start messing with this now, what I'm really doing is I'm changing the things that were white. So I'm going to come back up to my masking and I'm going to invert it. And that's blacking out, kind of making a silhouette of what we have here, which is what I want. I want to darken the sky a little bit and I want to warm it up. 
and maybe just a little bit of magenta. That mask may be more than what we can do, but you can see we've got these fine little branches over here. I think it worked very well. There might have been a small spot right in there that I didn't get quite right. But let's take a look at, there's our before, and there's our after. So that refine tool just saved us an incredible amount of time by automatically calculating the things that the super select tool couldn't do. We had to tell it where to look to try and re refine that mask. And that comes in very handy, not only for a situation like this, as you notice up here, it says hair. So if you're ever shooting a subject or a portrait subject that's got hair or that's flowing over something else, you may want to try and use that mask as well. Okay, let's go on to take a look at another image. All right, so I chose this image because there's a lot of contrast here. You've got a dark background, you've got bright red hair and kind of a porcelain tone to her skin. And this hair is going all over the place. If you thought that I was going to use the refine brush on this with a hair and branches tool, I'm not. I'm going to do something completely different. So I'm going to go over here to local, add an adjustment. Under masking, I'm going to do the usual thing. I'm going to come down here and look, and I'm going to look for people. And you can see that it's really overdone the mask. So let me apply that first. What I want to do is I want to refine the mask to just her hair. So if I click this, you can see that's way too much. It's got her skin, it's got her hair, and, and part of the background. If we come over to the blending mode, you'll see where it says color range. And you can choose different colors. And in this case, I'm going to choose reds. And it's a very subtle thing that you're seeing right now. But, you know, going from shadows to reds, and then to these other ones, you won't see too much change from the, some of these other ones because those colors aren't there. But I'm going to choose reds. This range allows you to suggest or select how much variation between red and the color that you have is going to be. Now, I wanted to select that because obviously it's not a true red. Their colors are kind of in and out for what she looks like here. So now that we've got that, our mask is still this whole thing that we're looking at. So if we click this on, we can do that. So we can do adjustments on the reds. And you can see as I move this back and forth, her hair is kind of going in and out of exposure while her skin tones are staying the same. But this is not exactly what I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reset this adjustment. I'm gonna come up to the mask and I'm going to reset it. And again, this little arrow that's turning counterclockwise will reset your mask. What I wanna do instead is come down here to this option that says color range and select that. And that gives us a mask. So we'll take a look at this. And you can see there's a lot of fine detail that's captured in the hair on her skin. But I don't want to touch her skin. So what I'm going to do instead is come over to mask. I'm going to invert it and work with a mask like this. Let me turn the masking off. Now, when I start working with exposure, I'm changing her hair in a lot more detail. I can add more contrast. And notice her skin tone isn't really being affected. Now, there are parts of the mask where it may affect her. So if I bring this on, you'll see that the eye isn't fully masked out. And down here underneath her lip, that isn't there. So in order to show that to you, I'm going to bring up this yellow and bring up the tint. And that'll affect her skin tones there a little bit. Overall, I'm affecting her hair. So we've kind of gone from this to this without really affecting her skin tone too much. We've got a little bit more in her lips, and I don't like some of the effect that I'm getting down here as bleeding on her skins, but that's because I've gone way too far with this. And we could also amp up the saturation, and you'll see it gets really chunky and crispy there, but that's not what I would want to do anyways. So I'll bring that up a little bit. And now I can start playing with the shadows, and we can really just make this whatever we want. So if I bring the temperature and tint controls back down, matter of fact, I'm going to reset all of this stuff, the contrast, highlights, shadows. And now we can start really doing something very different with this. Now keep in mind, this is still using the blending mode for reds. What happens if we change this to all? So we can take a look at our mask again. And I'm going to invert this one more time. 
and now we'll start playing with how everything's gone there. So we may not necessarily want to work with all of this stuff. I kind of like working with those color ranges and selection. But there's one more thing that I want to show you. So I'm going to reset all of these settings. I'm going to come over here to mask. It's on color range. But what I want to do now is this little light bulb gives a luminosity mask. And that creates something very different. So if I look at our mask now, we've got this. And if I invert that, we've got a very different look. So what do we want to do with this? Well, we can darken things down a little bit. We can play with the contrast. And you're getting a very different looking image now with just that luminosity mask. So whether you want to work with her hair or the image overall with a luminosity mask, you can make different adjustments and fine tune what you've done with her hair, what you've done with her skin, and what you've done with the image as a whole. And you can really just come up with some very interesting looks to the whole thing. Now we can still change, you know, the temperature of the whole image and we can kind of give it almost like a red overtone by moving up the temperature. But again, that's where I've got to be a little careful of what happens under her eye and down here. But that gives you an idea of what you can do with just a few of these masks inside of On One Photo Raw 2024. So we've gone from this image to this image. And if you don't like that overall color tone, we can bring it back over here and take a look at our before and after. And we've still achieved some targeted results using that luminosity mask, using the hair mask, and using uh, the color range to bring that out. All right, I hope this gave you some ideas. Whether you're portrait subjects or you're into landscapes or architecture or food photography, you can choose and mask inside of On One Photo Raw 2024 based on colors, based on luminosity masks. You can refine the mask if you've got little things like branches or hair that are overlaying something else. And you can really target the areas that you want to adjust. And then by adding different adjustments to it, you've got a lot of control without even having gone into the effects. So I hope this helps you out. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you again in the next video.